Have you ever crafted a soft cover journal from a ring binder? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to turn this ring binder into a cozy fabric journal cover. Welcome to another Defemerember countdown video. It's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. But before we begin, I want to share my latest digital kit. This is a very special one made just for Defemerember 2023. We have a mushroom theme in my favorite color combination, blue and golden yellow. And of course, we have our little craft buddy Effie as part of this kit. In total, there are 14 backgrounds and nine ephemera pages, both available in A4 and US letter format. You can find all the links below this video. So I will be using one of the background pages, some of the ephemera, as well as a new freebie that I will share later in this video for my cover images. And if you're not familiar with Defemerember yet, it's a month long series during December hosted together with my dear friend Louise Heinzel, in which we make fun ephemera for our journals using prompts that you helped us come up with this year. Defemerember is not Christmas themed by the way, but it can be if that's what you would like to do. And just as a reminder, Louise and I are sharing the prompt list on November 20th here on YouTube and other social media platforms. I will also link the Defemerember playlists below for the past two years, so that if you're new here, you can get an idea of what awaits you, although we did change a few things this year. So let's make our cover. I'm so excited. So here's the binder that Louisa and I decided to use. It's a six ring binder. I will link this below for you from Amazon Germany. Maybe you can find something equivalent in your country, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this binder. It doesn't have to be a ring binder at all. I, for one, am not a huge fan of these. Maybe you've seen the video where we first introduced these. If you've missed it, you can find that video in the Defemerember 2023 playlist below this video. Then you'll remember that I agreed, but I wasn't super happy with this. <laughs> and I'm still not. The more I think about it, the more I'm not happy with this idea in particular, because look, I just don't like how stiff this is. I still understand the advantages of having a ring binder. I think that's great because you have loose sheets, you have no sewing, you can decide spontaneously what papers to add, you can take papers away. So I love the flexibility of it, but I don't like the stiffness of it. So in my case, I am going to take away <laughs> both of these sides and just use the spine here with the rings so i'll put a cutting mat underneath and i'll use my rotary cutter which i am not good with but i'm going to give it a try anyway and i'm going to use this ruler which is actually for sewing and i'll cut here on the outer edge of this rim nah, i don't really have enough space here oh no how do i do this because <laughs> i don't think i can do this straight without the ruler oh my goodness i think i'll have to because i don't know how else to do this okay i'm standing up for this and i'm just hoping that i can keep a straight line okay straight ish i guess Okay, I'm definitely keeping these two because those are really good quality hard boards. And I can still adjust this a little bit with my scissors. But it's not so bad actually. So for the base, I'm going to use a paper bag, just like I do for my planners, because I love it. I'm going to be covering this with fabric. So the paper bag provides a really nice 
sturdy base but still very flexible if you don't have paper bags like this i get these at the grocery store you could use something like a file folder or other kind of packaging or even just a large envelope so as always i'm going to start off by just cutting off the handles of course you could reattach the handles they're a lot of fun i did that for louise's defemember journal for last year 2022 i love keeping these these are also really fun additions for any journal and then i'm going to open up the bottom here And now I can use these boards that I just cut off so that I see how big my journal needs to be. I'll give it maybe a little bit more room for the spine, just in case I add a little more bulk. I don't want to be restricted. So I'll cut it here. And I'll cut it here. I am so curious to see what Louise is going to make, what kind of a cover. Obviously, Louise's video is linked below as well. So we can go and watch that together. And I'm cutting right through this fold here. Obviously, when I cut this off, this part here will come out, but I'm leaving it here on this other side. It just strengthens the cover. So then this will be in the middle and this will be our cover. Actually, when I compare it to my planner cover, it's a bit tall because I will be using this page size. This is a little bit taller. Maybe I'll try to cut this down a little bit more. Okay, so I'll cut this down like another centimeter. I actually think I also want to cut off these corners. So for the outside, I want to add like a kind of a patchwork fabric design. And in order to decide which fabrics I want to use, I need to consider what my image is going to be that I'm going to add. So I printed this background from my Defem Rember kit, this is background page number two. And I'm going to take a part of this, probably exactly half, and I printed this at 80% because I didn't want it to cover all of the fabric that I have on the front. So these are the colors I'm going to have. So I need to choose fabric that's going to work with these colors. So let me share the fabric I chose. I think I have five different ones in total. So this is a very neutral one that will go with everything. This one is by Marsha Dursey. It's from the Spotted Graffiti Collection and this is called Snowball. This one is from the same Spotted Graffiti Collection, Marsha Dursey. And this blue version is called Blue Hour. Then we have this one, which is a canvas material. It's super soft. And again, it has more neutral tones. Again, Marsha Dursey, and this one is called Treasure Hunt, one of my favorite fabrics. Then we have an old friend here, <laughs> Fractured Mosaic by Tim Holtz. Don't have much of this left. I love this one so much. And finally, I have this gorgeous one by Seth Apter from the Storyboard Collection, and it's called Text Message. Look at all these wonderful words it has belief ephemeral serendipity original fearness possibility solitude authentic notes confidential priority etc etc love this one i purchased these from my favorite german fabric store it's called quilting for you I will link it below. Just so you're aware, the owner, Romy, is not able to ship any fabric between November 9th and 30th because she is away on a well-deserved vacation and she has nobody else to help her. 
So please keep that in mind. So I'll cut some pieces and then I'll be back. My preferred method to attach the fabrics is using textile glue. This one is from Action. You can just as well use a PVA glue or like a white glue. You could also use Fabri-Tex, whatever you prefer. I like thinning mine down with a little bit of water, not too much. Just makes it easier to spread. But if your glue is thinner, then you don't need to do that. I have all my fabric scraps ready to go. Maybe I leave some of these for on top because maybe I can put these down so that we see the wording here in the front. Also, these, of course, are translucent, so I could see the design of my paper bag underneath, which is not what I want. So it's probably better to start with these darker ones. Yeah, I think I'll start from the back side of my cover. I will also be sewing over this. But if you don't want to do that, you can just glue. And I'm gluing these on so that they overlap the paper just a little bit. And I'm just going to alternate with the different fabrics. If you're going to sew all around your cover, like also sew in the middle here, then actually you would only need a glue stick to secure your fabric. And if your edge is not even, you can obviously always trim it down later. I'm trying not to overthink this, but I don't think I'm going to succeed. <laughs> and I'm not adding the glue over the fabric because I wanted to keep the nice cozy fabric feeling. And if you don't want to do this with fabric, obviously you can also do this with paper scraps. Why not? Actually, I might not even put anything here in the middle because I think that would be a waste. I'm going to have my image over that. Yeah, so I will leave this part empty. I also want to share one thing. Maybe you've seen the video where I have created this basket for, for the scraps that Luisa has sent me. That video is part of the Defemember Ember playlist, which is linked below. And you might remember that I said it was very wobbly. So I'm trying to stiffen this by adding more glue. So last night I added some bookbinders glue. I used this one by Kolal on the inside and I'm going to let that dry at least two days. And because it's shiny now, you see that because of the bookbinders glue, I'm also going to add one layer of my Liquitex matte gel. And I'll do that both on the outside and the inside, always letting it dry two or three days. And hopefully this will make it a little more stiff. It is not a tragedy if it stays like this, but it's just a little too flexible for my taste. So that's maybe something you could try if you are struggling with a similar issue. Have you made your scraps bowl? Is that something you're interested in at all? I would love to hear if you enjoyed the process and if you're having fun with that idea. This here in the middle is of course my spine area. We're getting there. Okay, so everything is covered and now I want to add some of these. Which one do I want showing on the front? Document is good. Journal is always good. Ephemeral. I could cut this off to just say ephemera because that's what the ephemerember is about. <laughs> it's about making ephemera. Let's do that. That could be fun. Hmm. Let me cut this out because that will make it easier to decide where it needs to go. So this is the part I want to use and maybe I should tell you what I printed on. So I have this matte photo paper for inkjet. It's 130 GSM and it's from the German brand Schwarzwald Mühle. So let's have a look. Now it would be really good to know where the spine is. Add this inside to help us. Okay, so approximately it's going to be like this. So if my picture goes 
here. I might want to add a little strip here just so that I have more flexibility if I want to move this a little more there. But then that means this one can go up here like that. can also add something here discovery would be nice definitely going to discover new things or the journal the journal would be really cool as well believe we have to believe in ourselves possibility although the y is cut off mm, believe or journal let's do the believe here I'll cut this off because I don't want to waste that part because we won't see it. Another option is to do the fabric scraps like I'm doing. And if you want words like these, just print those out on paper and glue them on top of your fabric. It would be really nice to have journal on here as well. Maybe here. I like that a lot. For the back here, I can add the document and discovery because we're documenting a lot of different things and we're discovering a lot of new things, I'm sure. Then we have this one here that says confidential and priority. I'm going to cut off this part to just say confident because we have to be confident in what we're doing or maybe we become more confident as we go through defemorember so then we need to add some more fabric for the inside and for the inside i'm just going to put one piece i would love to use this one but it's just too see-through I do have another gorgeous one here by Seth Apter. It's also light, but I have the feeling we don't see through as much. Just a tiny bit, but I can totally deal with this. And this beauty is called Printed Matter and it's by Seth Apter again. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'll cut a piece a little wider than the paper bag. So I'll do this section by section because I think the glue dries before I can put the glue on the whole surface and it's easier to manage this way, I have learned. And I want to encourage you to do whatever is going to work for you. Just because Louise and I are doing the binder system doesn't mean that you have to. You can sew in your signatures like you usually would, whatever you feel most comfortable with, of course. You don't have to make a journal at all. You can just make the ephemera and either keep it for future projects or just store your ephemera in a box. What we're showing you here are just options, but in the end it's your project and you need to be happy with it. But I'm really enjoying this pre defemorember time. We haven't had it to this extent in previous years. And I feel the excitement in the air. I see you guys are posting and commenting and working on your defemorember projects to be ready. And it's so much fun. Okay, we have both sides covered. And these, of course, now need to dry before we continue. And in the meantime, I want to color this. I think it would look better if it's in, for example, this petrol color, which I think will go really well with the rest of the cover. And I'm going to do my best to cover this part off because I don't want the paint on the metal. So this is just masking tape. Okay, not too bad, that should work. I'm going to use this little sponge. You can obviously also use a paintbrush. Might have to do two coats. This will get messy, so I put on my gloves. <laughs> I'm 
I can't seem to get all the way in there, so I think I'll have to do some touching up with a smaller brush. So I dried it a little bit with my heat tool. Let's take this off so I can see where I need to retouch anything. I don't think I'll need a second coat actually. So now I can just touch it up. You see here, there's a little bit there and on the other side as well. Just take a smaller paintbrush and go in there. There's also just tiny bits that I missed in that crease there. Probably wouldn't even be necessary, but might as well do it. Something else I can prepare in the meantime while we're waiting for the cover to dry and also the paint. I want to have these two on my journal as dangles. These are from my ephemera page number eight. And I printed this on 200 GSM cardstock. You can also just print it on copy paper and then glue them onto a thicker cardstock. So I'm going to cut these two out. So I have them here. But I want to hang these like charms, but I don't want to put the hole through the D. So I want to back them with some more cardstock into which I can then punch the hole. So I'm going to check Louise's scraps that she sent me. Again, if you missed that unboxing video, that's part of the Defender Ember playlist. Let's see if there's anything that will work. So usually I would have these, of course, in my basket, but that's still drying. Maybe she has something blue that's on cardstock. I don't want to destroy this. Mmm, what about this one? I think this is perfect. How do we do this? Let's check our colors here on the cover and especially the spine. Both of these would work actually, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll take these here. Wow, look how well this matches. Perfect. Okay, so I'll cut out two pieces from here. Then I'll glue those on. I actually really like this part here, which is very irregular. And then I'll cut around this. leaving enough room up here for my hole. So I inked up my edges with walnut stain on both sides and now I'll punch a hole and set a golden eyelet in both of these. This is not absolutely necessary because the cardstock is definitely thick enough, but I just like the look of it. Gives it a more finished touch. These are ready to go. And then maybe you remember in the package with the scraps, Louise also sent me this amazing dragonfly charm. So obviously this needs to go on my cover. So I'm going to add this pin here through it. Actually, let's first add one of these golden beads. Then we'll add my dragonfly. Let's just do, whoops, <laughs> let's just do another gold bead. And then I have this cute yellow star. So there we have my signature colors, yellow and this beautiful light blue. So now I need to make a loop on top. No, I'm, I'm not very good at this. So I have this now and I just need to add a jump ring. I also added jump rings to these two labels. So these are all ready to go. So my cover is pretty much dry. And now I'm going to just trim off the edges here. I do want to fray it, so I'm leaving a little bit of space. 
And same thing here on the bottom. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. Again, this is optional. You do not have to do this. If you don't do this, then obviously glue your paper back together as well. You can leave a pocket, no matter if you glue or not. This is kind of stuck, but that's fine because I'm going to sew it together anyway. But in theory, you could have a big pocket in the front or the back or both. You could make one with a nice flap like I've done in my planner. I store my ephemera in here, so that might be a really fun idea for you. I show you how to make that in the plan with me video where I made this cover, which I will link for you below. But for this cover, I'm just going to sew it all shut and I might even add some crazy wonky stitching around the whole thing. So this is what we have. I chose a petrol blue thread. What my sewing machine really didn't like was this part here where I have some glue. Even though it's dry, it really had an issue with here. It just would not move anymore. So I had to manually do this part by just turning my wheel and actually moving the foot manually. So don't go over dried glue. This is what it looks like on the inside. And I did go around it twice with a running stitch on the edge. So next I want to finish decorating the front cover here. So we have our mushroom image and I have just inked around the edges with vintage photo. But I also want to add our little Effie because he's the star of the Ember. And to facilitate that, I have another freebie for you. Two versions of our Effie. You can find this linked below on my Kofi site. But these images are too big. So you can always shrink down images, of course. These would make really cute journaling cards as well. So I printed these again at 70%. And here you can see the difference. This is the photo paper I showed you before. And this is regular copy paper. I printed on both of these with the best print quality, not the default medium quality that your printer will automatically give you. You have to change the setting to best print quality. And in comparison, we can see that the colors here are warmer than on this one. But here they are more detailed and more crisp than on this version. And this one I printed at 70% and I'm going to fussy cut this version of Effie. So here he is, I've inked him up with walnut stain. And for those of you who missed his introduction, so Effie is our little craft buddy. He's going to help us out this year. And his name is kind of like a short form of ephemera. So Effie, and it's spelled E-P-H-Y. And that was Louise's brilliant idea to give him this name. And I think it's so fitting. So we could, of course, just add him like that. That would be adorable. Uh, but I want to try something else. So I printed this page of my ephemera, which is number seven. And I have these pockets here. So there's three smaller ones and three taller ones. And they're actually made so that you can fit the smaller one on top of the larger one. And then you have two pockets. But in this case, I don't think I really have room for the taller one. So I'm just going to use one of the smaller ones. And I think I'll just take this one. So I'll cut that one out. And this one, again, I printed on the photo paper because I wanted it to match in the style that is printed, of course, with this image that I also printed on the photo paper. I'll ink this up as well. Oh, by the way, I want to share something with you. Because maybe, just like me, you didn't know that this actually existed. So this ink pad was already fairly dry. 
and I didn't have a reinker for it. And I just recently found out that there's also these distress refreshers. And you just spray on your ink pad and then you, you let it sit, I don't know for how long, a couple of hours, I guess. Wait, what does it say here? Refresher, rehydrates and conditions, dry distress ink pads, markers, paints, and other water-based mediums. For ink pads, it says hold bottle two to three inches from pad and mist the entire surface. Allow the stress refresher to soak into pad before using. So I did that a couple of days ago and it's perfect. It's like it's a new ink pad. So maybe something you want to check out. So we can have the pocket here. I don't want to offset it because I want to see the journal. So I think I'll just put it on the edge here. And then we could have little Effie peeking out from there. That's so cute. <laughs> so let's glue little Effie down. So just to show you, for example, we could glue this one on top of that one and then just always glue down the edges and then we have two pockets. Then I just decided I'm also going to stitch around this here. So I went around it twice with a running stitch. And now we can glue this on. And then I found these pieces in Louise's scraps. So maybe we can use these to decorate the pocket here a little bit more. I don't want to cover this journal. Maybe I'll just tear these off. I don't know what this is or how Louisa made this, but it looks so cool. Provides beautiful texture. Again, I just want to be careful not to cover the journal. And then I also have a golden button. I could add that here. And let's also add some gold thread. And some of this beautiful petrol blue thread. Such a gorgeous color combination, the petrol and the gold. The golden thread is a bit of a diva. It does not like to be bunched up so much. I have to trick it a little bit. First, I want to add some of this petrol thread through the button. So I'll just sew the button around itself so that it looks like it's actually sewn on. I'll start from the top and then end at the top as well and then tie those off in the front. Just going around it a few times. And then I'll tie a double knot. Okay, I'll glue everything down. I'll secure this until that glue grips well. So for our dangles, I want to make a hole in the spine up here before I add this because this goes pretty much the whole length and I won't be able to do that once that's in. So I need to just find where my middle is by folding this in half. And then I'll just punch a hole with my crocodile. If you don't have crocodile or any tool to make holes with, just use an awl or something pointy. So then I'm going to add an eyelet here. And I'm also going to add one of these ring fasteners, either one of these small ones or a big one and again if you don't have anything like this there's always other solutions you can do something like i've done here in this journal i just punched a hole in the fabric there's not even an eyelet in there 
and then I just added some twine here around it to be able to dang this charm. So I'll add a gold eyelet to fit with my other eyelets and I need to do it from the outside of course. I've said this many times before, I'll say it again. If you don't have one of these tools, a copper dial, no matter what company it's from, this is something you should invest in if you are going to continue making junk journals or ephemera. This is an investment you'll enjoy for the rest of your crafting life. And now I need to make the decision. I think the big one is too big. Not necessarily. I guess it depends on how big my tassel will be at the end how many charms I add but I don't think I'll be adding that many let's see what the small one would look like I think I'll go for the small one somehow it's just not as much in your face you know what I mean <laughs> then I don't feel obliged to add a lot of charms if I don't want to so that is secured like that and now we can finally add our rings. Use whatever strong glue you have. I'm just going to use this PVA glue from Bösner, which is a German company. I buy it in a liter bottle and then I just fill it into a smaller one. Would be really cool if this came out. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's a bit difficult. And now we're just going to glue that right into the middle. Just wanted to double check if this is straight and in the middle. Yeah, I think it should be okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I'll see if I can find something to weigh this down a little bit. How about a brick? <laughs> that should do the job. So it's about an hour later. I've had some lunch. Let's take this brick off. Yeah, this seems like it's on there really well. Let's also take this clamp off. Okay, that glue has not dried completely yet. I still see a little bit, but that will obviously disappear once it's completely dry. Haha, look at that! <laughs> I am so excited. Never done this. This is so cool. Okay, let's add our dangles. So we have these three. I might add more later. And I'm just going to use some blue embroidery thread. I'll cut two strands. They're about as high as the cover, I'd say. Maybe a little longer. It doesn't really matter. Then I'll put the two ends through my ring here. And put the ends through my thread loop. Do the same thing with the other one. So now I have four strands hanging down and I can just attach these by tying them on. So I really wouldn't have needed those jump rings but that's fine. So I'll add one here and I'll just make a double knot at the height where I want this to be. Or maybe I'll just make a single knot for now. Maybe I want to change some, something later. Then the next one I'll add at a different height. And then we need to attach our dragonfly. I'll put that all the way on the top. I'll leave the long ends hanging and I'll also leave the fourth one hanging because who knows what else is going to happen during Defemerember. <laughs> want to be open for all possibilities. Oh, I like it. And I already have one piece that I can add in here which is this beautiful envelope made by Louise, of course. This is where she put the scraps in that she sent me. 
Yay, that makes me so happy. For me, the solution is best of both worlds. So I have my cozy fabric flexible journal cover that I love. But I also have the flexibility of the binder rings where I can just add and take out things as I go along. Whatever your cover is going to look like in the end, I hope you have a lot of fun making it. That's the most important thing. You have a month now approximately until Defemorember actually starts. So I'd say let's go watch Louise's video together. I am so, so, so excited. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.